Welcome to my channel. This is the part two video for the autonomic nervous system pharmacology. I spent a lot of time to create these videos because it's my priority to break down the information in the simplest way for you to understand. If you feel like I achieved that with this video, then hit the like button and subscribe for more. Now, if you haven't watched the first video on the introduction of the autonomic nervous system, then please, please, you have to watch it before this one. The video sets the foundation and I provide easily digestible information on the autonomic nervous system anatomy, chemical messengers, and target organ effects. Link will be above. In this video, I will focus more on the different classes of drugs on the market that work within the autonomic nervous system and interact with these target organs. The different classes of drugs used within the autonomic nervous system falls under either the sympathetic or parasympathetic division. Under the sympathetic division, we have the adrenoreceptor agonist or sympathomimetics and adrenoreceptor antagonist. Under the parasympathetic division, we have the cholinomimetics cholinesterase antagonists, and anticholinergics. The general mechanism of action of these drug classes aim to achieve two main things, either to increase the activity of the ligand or decrease it. In the sympathetic nervous system, the main ligand that interacts with the target organ is norepinephrine or noradrenaline. For the parasympathetic, it's acetylcholine. So next, I will provide more information about the different drug classes, the mechanism of action, example of drugs in that class and its indications. Side effects will come after all of that. First, adrenal receptor agonists and sympathomimetics. Agonists or mimetics are drugs that mimic the actions of something in the body, such as a hormone or a neurotransmitter. In this case, the neurotransmitter that's being mimicked is norepinephrine. So when these drugs bind to the adrenal receptor, on its target organ, we would get the same response that we would have saw if the real norepinephrine was bound to that receptor. So it's kind of like saying that these drugs increase the activity of norepinephrine at the target organ, which gives us more fight or flight response. Example of an adrenal receptor agonist or sympathomimetic are some of our vasopressors, such as phenylephrine. We use these agents to manage shock, which is characterized by hypotension and reduced blood flow to organs. Phenylephrine binds to alpha receptors, which is a type of adrenal receptor on blood vessels. This increases the activity of norepinephrine and it leads to vasoconstriction. I have a video on vasopressors and the different types of shocks link above. Adrenal receptor antagonists. These drugs block the adrenergic receptors on specific organs and prevent the body's norepinephrine from binding to that same receptor. This would then decrease the activity of norepinephrine in the autonomic nervous system, so opposite of fight or flight. We will get a rest and digest response. Example of an adrenal receptor antagonist are beta blockers. We use these agents to manage tachycardia, angina, and hypertension. These drugs block the adrenergic receptors on on specific organs and prevent the body's norepinephrine from binding to that same receptor. This will then decrease the activity of norepinephrine and decrease the heart rate. Next, cholinomimetics. By now you should know where we are going with this. These drugs bind to the muscarinic receptor on the target organ, leading to an increase in the activity of acetylcholine, which gives us more rest and digest response. Example of a cholinomimetic is bethanicol, which is used for urinary retention because of stimulation of the muscarinic receptors in the bladder. Cholinesterase inhibitors. So acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme in the body that breaks down acetylcholine, making it inactive. Acetylcholinesterase antagonists are drugs that occupy the acetylcholine space on that acetylcholinesterase enzyme and prevent the binding of the real acetylcholine so it doesn't get broken down. This will, of course, increase the amount of active acetylcholine and also its activity. Example of an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor is physostigmine. It's used to manage angle closure, glaucoma. The pathophysiology involves dilation of the pupil, which contributes to blockage of the aqueous humor from draining and instead builds up lead into an increase in the intraocular pressure. Physostigmine increases the acetylcholine levels, which will lead to pupil constriction and then drainage of the aqueous humor. Anticholinergics are drugs that bind to the muscarinic receptor on the target organ and occupy that space so that the body's acetylcholine cannot bind to it. This will lead to a decrease in the activity of acetylcholine. Example of a drug in this class is atropine, which is used for symptomatic bradycardia as part of advanced cardiovascular life support. Now it's time to really test your understanding. 
If you understood the different classes of drugs in the autonomic nervous system, its mechanism of action, the indications that they're used for, then you should be able to tell me some side effects of these classes. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, then hit the like button and subscribe for more. Which of the following are side effects of cholinomimetics and acetylcholine esterase antagonists? So both of these classes of medications increase the levels of acetylcholine, which is part of the rest and digest or the parasympathetic portion of the autonomic nervous system. Therefore, we should have more diarrhea, salivation, and bronchospasm. The airway is open during fight or flight, not when you're resting and digesting. Which of the following are side effects of adrenoreceptor antagonists? First, adrenoreceptors are part of the fight or flight or sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. In this case, the drug is antagonizing the receptors, meaning decreased activity of the fight or flight, so we get the opposite effects. So we should see a reduction in the heart rate as a side effect, increased urination, and hypotension. Tremors occur when your body is stimulated, like in a fight or flight response, so that would be incorrect. Lastly, which of the following are side effects of anticholinergics? Anticholinergics reduce the activity of acetylcholine, so we will get the opposite effect of rest and digest. So constipation, urinary retention, and increased heart rate. And that will be all. I hope you were able to follow along and develop an understanding in this topic. Hit the like button to show your support. Subscribe and leave comments as needed. Follow me on these social media platforms. Thank you for watching this video and take care.